if the race of the person who was run over by the truck uh, with the Nazi driver, if the race had to be a black man, would the Republican and American response be the same? Yeah. In, in, in terms of Charlottesville. This is where I'm, I'm militantly center. I would think it would be. It would be the same. I think if you look historically, at the statements about Nazism, uh, you know, let me give you an example. I believe this was before the woman was hit by the truck, by the way. But I'll check, I'll check my, my facts here. Um, Orrin Hatch, who is a violently conservative, <laughs> right? I mean, he's as conservative as any conservative. And I find his voting record to be almost party over country. Uh, Orrin Hatch said publicly that his brother didn't die in World War II so that he could make excuses or basically you know, support Nazism in America. Those are the things that we're seeing now are so beyond party. And it, you still see 60% of Republicans supporting Donald Trump in his statements. That said, there is a core, there's a core group of Republicans, particularly in the Senate, that I think would be consistent across the line. Not because of the race the individual harmed, but because of the Nazi impact. Okay, got it. Uh, reconcile that with the lack of uh, empathy and support for the folks who've been crying and dying as it relates to the police departments murdering black people. In terms of, you know, hey folks, people are, are, are definitely being shot by Nazis and racists. Uh, you know, this is not the first time, right? There's been a, a big pattern of black people being shot and killed by racists. All the way back. And you don't really hear much sympathy for that cause. No. In terms of from some of these people who are in an uproar uh, with the tiki torches and the little uh, kind of Walmart militia uh, uh, starter kits that they had out there. So this is, no, absolutely. One, absolutely. I think about this through this lens. And again, going back to my Philadelphia roots, I recently went back to Philly and I went to the, um, the Visitor Center and the National Constitution Center. And there's this amazing section that lays out the creed and the Declaration of Independence and the Constitution and how different groups from Obama, to JFK, to Martin Luther King, to others, have used the, the tenets of America to hold us to those founding principles. Inherent in your question is a lack of fairness, right? Inherent in your question is a lack of um, consistency in how different groups are treated for the same exact behaviors, right? You look at crack cocaine versus coke, uh, you know, cocaine, right? Sentencing guidelines, right? You know, uh, look at the, the current drug epidemic and how humane people are about opioids and unhumane they are on, on drugs other groups have done. Independent of those clear and decisive facts, the, country, the foundation of the country is nearly perfect. Nearly perfect. And the only reason that we assume things should be fair is because we want to be held to the ideals that the country was founded on. And so now it's up to us to change the hearts and minds of those that are participating in the, uh, in the franchise. That's good. This is Brian Brackeen of Kairos.com. It's been another amazing production here at Mogadom. Just click the back button to find more content.